So I'm going to call us to order at 6.30 on December 18th for the VUHS number 6 board meeting um, at 6.30. So we're called to order and the first thing on our agenda is to do a budget review for FY19. Um, this is for public. Um, it's really not public here but hopefully people at home will be able to watch this and get some questions answered and as we move forward. So, Bob, I guess I'll turn it over to you and Okay, for the thank budget you. Review. Well, I'm going to uh, talk about the side of the budget that is the spending plan because we pretty much have that set, although there's always possibilities of changes later, a little bit later, but the actual spending, we should be pretty well set. Um, and Frank will review a little bit. We just at what, 349 this afternoon, mm -hmm. got our number, equalized pupil number from the state, which shows a little bit of a wrench in the revenue picture. Um, and that might have impact what we decide to do fund balance wise in terms of supporting the budget. But for before he does that, I will go briefly through the, the spending part of the budget and I'd like to set the set the stage a little bit by talking about um, what does it look like next year for uh, the high school the middle school and the career center in terms of uh, how many kids we'll have because we always think about we hear about reduced 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 numbers all over and we have experienced that somewhat over the years but I think it's important to note in this particular projection for next year, our actual census um, projects a slight increase in the number of students. With the Career Center remaining at the same level of 150 uh, students approximately, uh, BOHS is projected to go up uh, from currently 798 to about 826 students as a larger incoming freshman class and actually a small uh, fairly small senior class from what I understand and BAMS is projected to drop uh, about 10 students so overall it's you could basically call it level uh, in terms of the census so <clears throat> the spending part of the budget uh, our work starts in, in October and the first uh, procedure is uh, to meet with the administrators uh, the finance committee um, uh, gets together but then the uh, administrators also get together and the finance committee and the board by way of the board gives uh, some general direction and this is I, I didn't go back and count the number of years but I'd say 10 or 11 years in a row our directive has been to administration to um, have a level service budget and as close as possible to level level funding and once again, um, as they have every year, they have met at that request um, for a, both a level service and a level funding budget, essentially, for this coming year. Um, and I, I'm gonna, I'll go down and talk about the three units, uh, high school, career center, and BAMS a little bit. Um, now included in, in all of these budgets, obviously, uh, is collective bargaining increases which uh, are we have now have a three-year arrangement um, they're included in that increase uh, health insurance uh, is uh, projected to go up about still five percent is that number yes, three so. work okay um, and uh, however discretionary expenses pencils and books and uh, the things that the, the staff um, needs to make the place run is being held basically at level uh, wherever possible with very few exceptions so it's a, a tight budget I guess you would call that um, a very responsible one I think every um, department was reviewed uh, fully for their discretionary spending uh, we also uh, evaluated teacher student ratios if you've been listening to education news at the state level, that's a that's a, a hot button right now is teacher-student ratios, and that's been reviewed for every department. And uh, so we have what I think is a, a pretty solid uh, spending budget to start with. 
and we, we look at it from uh, the perspective of the three units separately and uh, I've noticed that everybody on the board still have their printout summary page there. Yeah. I'm going to go by that, and I realize people uh, watching on TV don't have this, so I'll try to just explain it um, in a way that makes sense and not talk about which line and whatever. Um, but uh, the district-wide budget and what that is, is is items that go across all two or three units, such as janitorial service, library service, and uh, things that are common to all the schools, and they're in the district-wide budget, as well as the maintenance of this, uh, this big facility. And the district-wide budget is actually down about six-tenths of a percent, or projected to be for 2019, down six-tenths of a percent. Um, the only significant change there, uh, and it's not really a, a big impact, uh, is uh, uh, adding a, a day supervisor to the custodial staff in order to allow Robert Clark, who is our maintenance uh, uh, head of maintenance, to spend a little more time working um, for uh, supervisory union uh, issues. He's particularly an expert in the areas of efficient lighting and, and uh, uh, energy efficiency, and he saved a lot of money for us over a period of time and he, he generally or sometimes helps out uh, supervisory union um, and also uh, for him to be able to better uh, focus some time on on build on capital projects as, as they come along um, on the one of the ways we've been able to save some money is through Robert's efforts and uh, for instance the electric budget is electricity budget is going to be down um, we also will be uh, with the uh, adding a day supervisor, but we will be um, eliminating the outside cleaning service, uh, which take, which does part of the cleaning. Is that Keen? Uh, at well, it, was, it was Cheshire. Or Cheshire, yeah. Um, so now that'll be all done with our current staff. So the district-wide budget, which is a 10.8 million, 10.9 million dollar budget will actually be down by $68,000 or six-tenths of a percent. Um, high school, that's the biggest chunk. Uh, it's a $6.4 million budget, and that will be down 1.7%. And uh, there is um, uh, no um, personnel additions at the high school. And uh, were there any, Steve, were there any changes in position. I think pretty much everything in the high school is Everything's the same, right? operating just as it was. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, you know, a, a, a good tight uh, review of discretionary expenses uh, results in a 1.7% decrease in the projected budget for the high school for next year. Uh, that's uh, $107,000 less than this year. Um, Tuition to the Career Center is uh, figured in there. That will be down just a little bit based on the number of BUHS students. Approximately 80% of the Career Center students are BUHS and the remainder are from Sending Towns, just to give you a frame of reference. Um, so that makes, uh, the, that's thrown in with the high school budget and again, 1.7% decrease. BAMS is uh, the one place where we are uh, adding um, some staff uh, staff expense, and that would be for two new parent educators uh, in, in a regular regular education part, not special ed, regular education. And the reason for this is that uh, we have more and more kids, and uh, quite a larger number at BAMS of kids that need some extra help and. Uh, it's a challenge for teachers to be able to uh, deliver the curriculum uh, and at the same time deal with some of these needs of these, these students. And uh, uh, we felt as a, as a board, or well the board hasn't voted yet, but the finance committee, that it was appropriate to put some um, 
human resources to this challenge. And if again, if you've been uh, paying attention to the education scene in general, uh, we are not alone in, in having um, uh, more kids that need some extra help. So uh, the BAMS budget is actually up. Uh, it's a $3.6 million budget. It's up uh, 172,000, uh, primarily the two paras, uh, and of course benefits. Uh, and um, there are a few other categories of BAMS that are up slightly. <coughs> Uh, one other change was that uh, from last year we had a half-time math uh, teacher that uh, was not rehired and we have also are, uh, have reduced uh, a little bit in our um, beams and uh, peak programs. So uh, that puts the BAMS budget at, a, at an increase, a slight increase of 172,000 or 5 percent. The Career Center uh, basically uh, comes out at 2.5 million is the is the total budget 2.545 million. Uh, there we have made uh, a couple of uh, changes, and one is at this point is uh, a cut of the horticulture program. Uh, each each program at the Career Center has to be evaluated. Uh, with uh, regards to level of interest uh, and you know, how many students we have signed up and um, unfortunately right now horticulture is, uh, is very lightly subscribed. We have, however have left the door open so that if in the course of the spring we are able to drum up um, student uh, involvement in a horticulture program we'll, we'll find a way to um, to keep it going. But at this point, uh, that's the one program cut. Um, also with the Career Center, a part-time business teacher uh, has been moved over to academic support. Uh, not a major factor in the bottom line. So the Career Center budget, again, 2.545 million, is about 2.3% up. So if you put this all together, uh, we come out with a budget of $25,375,895, and that is a mere $16,698 increase, or one-tenth of a percent. So basically, we have uh, achieved the level, uh, level funding and um, level service budget. And the Finance Committee has reviewed this uh, department by department, line by line. If, if anybody would like to have more individual details about departments, we do have a, a full printout uh, that the Finance Committee has used to take a look at, it, at everything line by line. So um, that's what our spending plan is currently. Uh, now we have to look at uh, how is that uh, funded and what is the revenue picture and uh, Frank has a bit of an update on that. Uh, late breaking news, I guess we call it. Mm -hmm. Right. So at the, our December 4th meeting, we handed out a um, revenue summary based on what we knew at the time. Um, and uh, uh, what, what has just come in is the uh, equalized student number that uh, allows us to calculate a tax rate a school property tax rate. So uh, you may recall we, we had discussed the um, various line items. That was page two if you actually have your document there. Um, uh, and the largest number, the biggest assumption on, in that document is the uh, state aid. Um, <coughs> it's, it's, it's basically the 25 million that Bob has just discussed uh, in spending, minus all of the other revenue sources that we have that are not directly tax-based. So the single largest uh, revenue is uh, tuition, 
Um, and then, and that would be from towns like Dover and, and Marlborough, the, the, the non-member towns whose students attend here. And then we have uh, various categorical aid lines from the state. Uh, and essentially we take our spending proposal, we subtract those revenue lines, and then it creates the, the state aid number, the large number on the page there. Uh, if you're looking at page two, it's in the top third. You, you can see it stands right out. 19 million was a, their initial draft. So that number goes into the school funding formula and, and uh, essentially sets the tax rate. Um, but so two things have occurred since our December 4th meeting. Uh, one is that we had confirmation from the State Board of Education that the arrangement between uh, Vernon and BUHS is actually being implemented from the state's point of view uh, for this budget, fiscal year 19. We had hoped that it would be implemented in fiscal year 20, um, but it's not. So uh, on page two, when, when we bring you the, uh, what we, we would hope to be a final proposal on uh, January 8th, for your consideration. We, of course, vote on the expenditures, but we need to have a plan that, that clearly funds the expenditures. You're gonna see an additional about 1.9 million in, in tuition revenue to page two, uh, because the state is saying uh, BUHS will not be counting the Vernon students that are here, as you have been for the last 50 years. You're gonna, uh, the, the, uh, the state is gonna assign all Vernon students to the Vernon School District. And they are gonna pay us uh, however number of students attend times the tuition rate, which we think will be about 15,500. So it's 15,500 times about 120 students is about 1.9 million. So we're gonna add that. Um, and uh, and then I do need to, to meet with Steve and and our administrators and finance committee to talk about well, what are there any other implications in the spending plan associated with the Vernon students being categorized as independent? The only thing that comes immediately to mind is is probably transportation. We'll, we'll revisit the transportation arrangement because typically uh, a, a, a union host school will pay for the transportation for its resident students of the member area, but not for you know students coming in from uh, Marlboro or other. So we'll, we'll, we'll look at that. Uh, but the, uh, then the, uh, the other issue that just, as Woody had mentioned, just came in at 3.49 this afternoon uh, from the AOE is, is the, this equalized student figure. And we expected that to be down about 120 kids because we know about 120 kids are going to be paying tuition. But the, the number is down significantly more than that, which, as you know, the, the funding formula is pretty much cost per student. So if we have fewer students counted in the funding formula, the cost goes up. So um, we're going we're gonna to review uh, as, as I said, any implications that are simply a wash where we add revenues associated with the Vernon, but we subtract some of the expenses that may be associated with that. Um, but, but then we may have to revisit some of our spending assumptions, even though you've heard from Bob that it's essentially level funded. Um, uh, without, without making any adjustments, we, we would be looking at a fairly significant um, tax increase, which obviously we want to avoid. Um, so I hope to set up a meeting with the Finance Committee uh, maybe first week in January. We'll, um, we'll have some, some uh, recommendations and uh, with, the, with the eye toward not only level service, level funding, but also uh, reasonable um, tax rate. So. What's the difference between the one and a half million of Vernon is going to tuition in mm -hmm. and what we would have got if they stayed at the union? So the difference is um, the, the, um, the, they're entirely different um, funding mechanisms in, in that 
um, from BOHS's point of view, um, we were uh, counting Vernon as part of about a thousand students here, and we take uh, the 25 million divided by a thousand students, and we get a cost per student. Now that's a gross number. Before we get to that number, which you would you could do in your heads of 25,000, there's all of that revenue, about six million in revenue that we take off. So that's how we go: 25 million minus the six brings us down to that 19 divided by uh, a little bit more than a thousand students, and there's there's simply a, a statistic that creates a tax rate. Um, and then Vernon is 30% um, of UHS's in terms of not the total population, but Vernon's population. So Vernon pays 30% of that UHS tax rate. And they pay 70% of their local. That's the way the tax, taxes are, are derived. When we go to this uh, tuition arrangement, um, it's it's an entirely different mechanism in that uh, we we still have the 25 million, but now we're going to not reduce six million, we're going to reduce about eight million. So you can see we're going to go towards 16 million divided by the thousand minus the hundred and something burning kids. Theoretically, that should have been about the same number, but it's it's not primarily because. Um, we also have this um, uh, new legislation, Act 49, Act 46, that removes what's been called the hold harmless provision for all towns, which is if, if any one town dropped more than 5%, the state said, well, we're not going to give you the lower number. We're going to give you a, a number that is no more than a 5% decline. Well, they've removed that uh, threshold. So now, not only are we losing the Vernon kids, but we're losing the whole harmless protection for the four other towns, Brattleboro, Dummerston, Putney, and Guilford. And that's, that was not, uh, not, uh, you know, not known until the statistic is provided to us because we don't calculate that statistic. Um, and that's what's, that's the difference between our last finance committee meeting and this, this meeting. Uh, it's new information. How many about were the as a result of the whole harmless? How many? Uh, I had a conversation today with the with the agency head, and they said about sixty. Yeah, sixty students. Um, because our overall equalized student number is down about nearly two hundred students. We expected at least one hundred and twenty, but that additional eighty is a makeup of the whole harmless provision that we couldn't calculate, and then just our normal. Uh, slow, slow decline in enrollment. You've or you've heard that we're probably going to see uh, uh, a, a, maybe a little bounce next year because we have some small classes leaving and larger classes coming in. But uh, it's a trailing two-year average, so uh, these things work themselves through fairly slow. And it's also that they're equalized students, which uh, one person is an equal to all the state all the time. Right. The state takes data from the uh, tax department and other social service departments and assigns a, a weighting factor so that theoretically if you have more students in poverty, then you're going to receive a higher count. Um, and remember, a higher count in students with the same level of spending lowers the tax rate. The idea is that we would take that higher uh, count and uh, do what Keith has recommended here. We reinvest in interventions that address issues around students at risk of failing. And that's what we've done. Any, uh, any questions? Yeah. Well, right after the holiday. Yeah. So it's a lot to chew on and a lot of a lot of things thrown into the sausage maker at uh, kind of at the eleventh hour. But that's that's what we have. We're dealing with in the state right now. We're not the only ones. But I think we put together. I mean, our our part of the budget basically is. Um, 
uh, we control is the capital is the spending and the capital plan and I think we have a good uh, six or eight uh, year look out on the capital plan we're responsible with that and uh, um, we kept our expenses in line so um, based on what we end up learning for what we have to do we'll have to perhaps make some further revisions but uh, we'll do that as soon as we can and finance will come to you with recommendations because uh, we will need to vote um, on the 8th pretty much right yeah. in order to have the between the 30 to 40 days uh, uh, warning right so I just that's it for okay. us right now excellent <laughs> nobody else has any other questions we can just go ahead and move into the next part of the budget the next part of the meeting everybody good all right so um, let's go into clerk's report and approval of the minutes from our December 4th meeting. So moved. Moved. Second. Moved and seconded. All right. Is there any additions, deletions, corrections to those minutes? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed or tensions? Okay. Um, do any board members have any other communications to come forward tonight? Seeing none. We'll move on to recognition of groups and individual visitors. Um, it's generally the regular cast of characters. I'm assuming Mr. Perrin will introduce his guest later. Yes? Yes, it's student council. Oh, excellent, very good. All right, so we will get a report from that later. So is there a motion to enter consent agenda? So moved. And a second? Second. Moved and seconded, okay. So we'll start with, with finance, building, and transportation. That's not met. But there's some stuff on the uh, there's some stuff listed on our agenda. Uh, but we have not met. To do that, okay. To do that, yeah. All right. Okay. So we'll have to go on the next agenda. Sorry. No, no problem. Um, WSESU finance. Well, the um, the full WSESU board met on the sixth of December um, to pass, and we passed the eighteen point eight million dollar budget that I had presented here a couple of days earlier. And uh, so that, that went through with um, you know, some, some good discussion and the help of, of Frank. Um, a couple of other things that ca uh, came up that um, I, I wanted to mention. One was um, the Finance Committee going through the, um, the warrants um, saw, uh, we noticed a lot of um, purchases from Amazon. And so one was, one thing that brought it up, it looked like it was coming from schools as opposed to the just SU related sorts of thing. And also was the amount. And so um, a suggestion to put this on the agenda for maybe for the next meeting is to discuss, I mean, that's what I'm discuss now, but um, you know, the, just the, the pros and cons of, of um, Amazon spending as opposed to local spending and, and, and just how those things work. And then more of an SU issue probably would be the, the way that, that it's done, that it's done through the SU rather than e through each school's budget. So it's, it's complicated and, and takes some extra staff to deal with it. So anyways, that, that was one issue that came up. Um, uh, also, um, another issue that, that maybe should be on the, on the next uh, agenda is, to, I brought it up before, but, but we're gonna be, the SU is meeting again on February 8th. I think that's right. February, I have it down at 6.30 in uh, Putney on, on the 8th of February. Uh, the SU Finance Committee's next meeting is on the 25th of January at 5.30. Um, but what we, what we want to um, accomplish at that meeting is the question of reorganizing or, uh, the Finance Committee to include, uh, or whether or not to include the Executive Committee functions and the bargaining uh, functions. So uh, you know, all of the, the local boards have been have been bringing that up, and you know, I, I don't know if it should be if we want to have a more robust discussion about that or not. Um, I haven't heard of, uh, that much that much feedback on it, but it would be you know adding the executive roles as well as I mean, what you were on the the negotiating committee, weren't you, for the issue, and and just the way that that is is set up and whether to. Um, 
just roll the function of that board into the into the what's currently the finance committee. Um, so uh, we're we're going to the finance committee on the twenty fifth will put together a not December twenty fifth but January twenty fifth will put together um, uh, a proposal to the full SU board uh, about that. So if we want to have a discussion here to um, inform me in terms of, of what you all think uh, the SU committee can do. Um, maybe we could all take some time to think about that. Yeah. Maybe at our next meeting, our first meeting in January, mm -hmm. have a little bit of a discussion about that at that time. Okay. Is, that is that your recommendation at this point? Or the committee's recommendation? Or are you just saying it's something that's being discussed? It is being discussed. Okay. I mean, it, it, you know, at this point, it, it's probably combining all three is is probably where the committee is going. I have a little bit of, you know, if, if things are going well, then it's it, it's fine. If, but if things if things come up, if negotiations don't go well, um, and other things come up, how many? How much can five or six or I don't know what the firm still on the SU, but you know how many? You know how how much can one committee do and should do? I mean, you know, do you want you know that much? Authority in one committee or not? I, mean, I think we've we have we've never done the, the labor negotiations. We we've, we've taken on some of the executive functions, and we want to formalize that. And I think that makes sense. And the SU committee, the finance committee, makes a lot of sense in that there is representation from all the boards. So uh, the full SU has three from every board, but the finance committee has one from every town, and so and 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 BUHS, and so. It seems like a logical place to, to make SUY sorts of decisions, um, and, and rather than and, you know, the other uh, another alternative is they have three separate, very clearly defined separate committees. Um, you know, do, do time, I, I think there's a resistance to that just in terms of the time commitment for having more committees put on on everybody's plate. Um, but the other hand is is you know how how much time and responsibility should be the yes, SU. No, we, I don't think we've, we've, we have not voted to make a recommendation. Frank and Lyle, I don't know if you want to add anything to, to that as well. But Frank, you obviously got all the numbers. Thank you. Review that well. Yeah. So. Excellent. So I'll put that on our agenda for next time. Yeah. To me, it sounds like it just comes down to how many meetings can this one group of people stand. Yeah, you, know, you can end up meeting every night in a week. Oh yeah. And and you know, I mean, for instance, I mean, within always within since I've been on the board, it has been, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, negotiating uh, you know, superintendent contracts and and and, and, the, and uh, reviewing that. So, you know, is that finance? Is executive? Part of it is the SU, I don't think, has a really formal description of what we've been doing. So part of what we're doing is proposing, here's what we have been doing, you know, should we formalize it? Uh, with the, the addition is, um, is the, the labor uh, negotiation part of it. And I've never been on, a, on a, one of the negotiation committees, so I don't really know what, how much that, you know, how much involvement that. Well, that <coughs> just as a frame of reference, uh, I've been on it now for maybe 10 years. I, I can't remember how long. Uh, I was uh, I did the support staff for three or four years, and then the uh, main certified staff. And <clears throat> generally, because uh, there's so much groundwork done ahead of time by administrative uh, people, and uh, you know, Ron in the past, and now a while, I'm sure, is that uh, it's. It's not that heavy a load to carry. You know, some years we may have had three, three or four meetings at the most. Uh, this year was we have a three-year contract now, which is pretty simple. So it doesn't seem like there's a lot of heavy lifting coming up in that right away. And I would, as it relates to the executive function, uh, I I wouldn't. Uh, I'm not perhaps qualified to speak about that because I haven't been on the SU board, but. Um, I can't imagine that that would be that often that that would create a, a hardship or regular meetings all the time. Yeah. Executive function could be accomplished as needed. Right. No, it, it's when when 
you know, events happen, like, you know, a superintendent leaves and we've got a higher ending superintendent. So there, there's a peak there. And on those rare occasions, and I think it speaks really well to the administration and our, our uh, you know, the teachers and the boards that we haven't had a lot of labor strife. And so things, you know, I, I think that you're right. My impression is that it, it hasn't been that much time on, on boards. But you know, if things spike, um, you know, is, is that, do you want, and, and there's sort of a different skill set, a different mindset as well in terms of other different, different <coughs> functions. And I think it would work, um, but, you know, I, I don't want to be the, I, I don't want to be the decider. I mean, you know, I'll make, I'll make a decision that I think, but, but also, but it's going to be based on, I'm representing the board, this board, so I'm not going to. It, it does need to be formalized because I was filling in for you one time mm -hmm. when we oh, had a situation come up that needed to be dealt with at the SU level. And really the finance committee was the, the only organized <coughs> committee that could deal with it. But it's, it's sort of like the the questions that they're having now in the legislature, you know, who's responsible for for these types of things? And so I think it does, I don't see any problem with the finance committee doing it. And like you said, situations don't come up very often. I, and I hope they don't start coming up very often. Um, so it wouldn't be an onerous task on the committee, but it just needs to be formalized that that is one of their responsibilities so that when something comes up, they know, you know who's responsible for it. No, and I think that's it, is, is formalizing it, and, and a lot of it is, we've done, we've acted in that, in that way. Every now and then we go to the full SU for specific authorization to take something on, and that's always been, been voted in. So it is it is formalizing it. Yeah. Which makes sense. So we'll have a more robust conversation. Just wanted to, what else we did just this will probably be coming here as we go through policies, but we also talked about um, uh, and, and, and passed a couple of policies, one being the healthy foods uh, with a fairly robust discussion, both in terms of, of bake sale sorts of things and whether those are allowed and at different levels. And there are different rules for, for high school as opposed to the, the elementary schools. And then, then you know, so on one side is, 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 is sorry, bake sales, is that okay? And the other side is, is, is uh, um, you know, some questions of additives and other sorts of things, but we, we work through that through recommendations rather than, than requirements. And then we also um, had a, a very robust discussion about, uh, it was the um, transgender and gender non-conforming students, but it was changed to transgender and gender creative students. And we had a very good full discussion um, about the practicalities of it, about the, the language of it, about the, the spirit of it. and. Um, and that passed, uh, that passed as well. So we did various revisions there. So I, can, I, I assume you all have access to <coughs> things that the policies are, are they up yet? Um, um, I um, don't think they are. Uh, Barb said we need to re-vote on the gender creative. Um, oh, because it hadn't been warned as a vote, it had only been warned as reading. Oh, okay. okay. And I think there were too many changes with the wellness that we need to bring that back. Bring back as well, okay. Um, so you get another chance to talk about healthy snacks um, <laughs> and big snacks. Um, but I think that that's, um, that's, that's basically it. It was a very, very full, productive meeting. Great. Thank you. All right, planning and policy. Has not met. Teacher curriculum. Has not met. BAMS committee. Has not met. WRCC. Has not met. Okay. All right. So, is there anything else for consent agenda? Is there a motion to accept consent agenda? I move we accept the consent agenda. Sure. Move and second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Aye. Excellent. All right. So, let's move to administrative reports. Why don't we start here with the career center? <coughs> Good evening, everyone. So, a few items for tonight I want to share out. Uh, for part of our outreach this year at the Career Center, 
<coughs> we have created a, a road show and what that will consist of is myself and Doran, the counselor, and some programs. Uh, students go are going to demonstrate career center programs on stage for our sending school students and eighth grade students as well. And our first one will be January 12th at BAMS. And we're super excited. Uh, it'll be engaging, hopefully, and uh, get students excited about our programs just to see what we, what we offer for uh, our communities. Uh, Michelle Moise has been instrumental with designing and a tactical resource for the show. And there'll be a lot of added cool uh, audio features as well and uh, filming. And also our film students will be participating as well. So look forward to that. If you're interested in checking us out, the first one will be January 12th at BAM's multi-purpose room. Do you, know, do you have time for that? Yes, it'll be... No, let me get back to you on that in the afternoon. Okay. Our uh, dance program will be performing the Nutcracker this week. At uh, They performed this morning at Green Street. And tomorrow they'll be at Vernon and Guilford. Two, and also Marlboro. And on Wednesday they'll be at Put Putney Central. Uh, so those of you that have a chance, check those out. Uh, if you want the times, shoot me an email. And it should be a great performance by our dance students. I want to thank uh, Janet Crass and Tom Fragella, our pre-tech exploratory teachers, last week. And about 15 of their pre-tech students collect uh, food for Project Feed at six of our elementary schools in town. And the feedback I received from the teachers was that the students really took it seriously uh, to drive around and pick up the food. And I know some of the students involved are probably participants of the food, food shelf. So it really it was a humbling experience for our students to see and to help get back to where the food actually comes from for the food shelf. So kudos to all those that were involved. It's a great opportunity for the kids and uh, my staff to participate in that every year. Uh, we will be introducing a new nursing LNA two-year program next year. I'm excited to announce within uh, WRCC programming and looking forward to uh, sharing more information to come this year with students and parents if they're interested and learning more and we'll be uh, uh, educating everyone about the, those opportunities um, and that's all I have for tonight great thank you Can we just because of the extra edition we'll just skip out of BAM and we'll come back to the next one <laughs> hi everyone Let's see a couple quick uh, things uh, going on at BAMS here. Uh, last week before break, Team Draco is doing what they call geese giving and they're doing good deeds in the community this week. So they're rotating four groups, going to the <coughs> animal shelter, Pine Heights, and doing a bunch of cooking and, and uh, distributing to the community. So they do that every year and it's a nice event. Um, Thursday is a half day of school, 1230 release, and we do a all school volleyball tournament for the last little bit of that day. It's, um, it's a great event. The students in phys ed classes have been doing a volleyball unit, so they finish up and they have a little competition between teams and ultimately a champion. And if there's time, they, the champion plays against the staff. So it's, it's a nice event. And the gym is, um, the, the noise level is piercing <laughs> during this event. <laughs> Kids get very excited. Um, we do have some alternative spaces for some students who would have a hard time with that. And there are some M staff. <laughs> um, 
every year we do a holiday shop, which is uh, Flow Leather, who's on a leave, uh, had been running that for years. And uh, we set up a, a little room and we collect donations and of used, mainly used items. And then students can purchase those with uh, BAMS bucks, so those little incentive dollars that Ron used to carry around. And um, uh, so with Flo's absence this year, Jen Miner and Jill Kelly in the office and, and uh, some of our counselors, Don Petrovsky, our counselors, uh, Paul and Tracy, all helped set it up this year along with all the staff. And there's been tons of donations. And today was the first day it opened up and it was packed in there. And kids are coming away with great, uh, really nice items being donated. And the room was full of material, of, of um, gifts. And the, the idea is the kids can uh, pick out gifts for their family and friends. And then we even have uh, students and adults wrapping those gifts for them. And, and then they can give them to family and friends. So it's a really nice event. And um, just uh, blessed to have it. Um, at BAMS. I apologize, I missed the, uh, the budget stuff. Um, I did, uh, the Agency of Education um, distributed a 71 page document recently titled uh, Vermont Ag Agency of Education Expanding and Strengthening Best Practices, Best Practice Supports for Students Who Struggle. Preliminary highlights, 71 pages. Um, and I wanted to give this to you this evening because it might give you a little bit of background into um, some of my requests and some of the things that we're dealing with. Um, there's 15 copies, so. Um, and uh, we're not gonna, we don't need to break it down now, but um, I, I did not give you all 71 pages. I took a, a section that really highlights in particular when you open it page 40 and page 41 really highlight perhaps some of the conversation I missed a little earlier around our needs to support students who struggle and it it really is a statewide issue across it's a it's a significant issue in our state and the first sentence, nearly all schools across the country are experiencing an increased need for social, emotional, and behavioral support. That opening paragraph really summarizes um, some of the needs we, uh, I'm really identifying and the staff are identifying as um, needed. And it's a lot more than just uh, kind of adding a few staff members. It's, it's way deeper than that, and I have a lot of work to do to uh, develop what it might look like. Um, but I ha it, under the in the middle of page 40, it talks about best practice, um, and you see a DD handwritten in there. That stands for developmental designs. We are doing some of this stuff at the basic levels to try to address um, student needs. Um, but there's a lot more that's needed. Um, the last section on page 40 really highlights what the STEP program, um, it's not a program, I, I, the STEP model would potentially look like to support our students. And Shelley Wilson and Greg Stoller, who are SU level kind of um, developers of the STEP model, produce a slideshow that maybe some, a different day I can present, but STEP uh, stands for supporting, uh, Supportive Steams, Teams for Educational Progress. And so as I move forward at BAMS, I, we hope to develop, increase our <coughs> understanding and support to implement STEP at BAMS for special ed and regular ed students. So that's just an overarching summary um, really brief but th there's a little reading you can do there if you're if you have um, kind of questions or trying to wrap your head around um, what some of the needs are in our schools um, pages really 40 and 41 really highlight a lot of it um, so yeah just a quick snapshot but it give you a little background there um, I have the complete report if anybody's interested in it. I have a few copies. Um, 
you can ask me after and I'd be happy to give it to you. It covers a lot more than behavior, behavior in that. It talks about academic supports and, and different things. And, and it really verifies a lot of the good things we are doing at the school, but um, we, have, we have continued growth in the future. So, thank you. Thank you. All right, let's move to the high school. Great. Uh, I'd like to start by introducing our student council members. Um, but I, would, I guess I would ask if we could start with Ann and go around so they can know who you all are, and then uh, they are not shy, and uh, they can take it from there. So, Ann, if you could say who you are and what town you represent. Hi, I'm Ann Eastman. I'm representing Putney. Hello. Katie Everest from Brattleboro. Hi. Uh, Sean Murphy from Guilford. Uh, welcome. Uh, Mike Collier from Vernon. Bob Woodworth from Brattleboro. Ruth Barton from Gummerston. Ricky Davidson from Brattleboro. Kyle Holiday, Superintendent of Schools. Michael Burnett, Director at the Career Center. You know me. <laughs> Hi, I'm Mr. Lyman. I'm the principal at the middle school. I never had you. No. no. Gummerston kid. I'm from St. Mike's. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I am Amelia Glickman. And I'm Natalia Forkin. Um, thank you for inviting us here. So the student council is currently wrapping up our Feed the Thousands food drive. We are one of the big groups who is organizing this at the high school, including FBLA. Um, and we are very impressed with the amount we've gathered so far. We started a new competition type basis where we have boxes for each grade and we have actually on our student council board um, a bar graph representing how much each grade has brought in to encourage people to bring more. I think it's worked pretty yeah. well so far. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think the added element of competition really helps people to kind of remember because uh, they were told that there would be a um, prize at the end, and there will be. And it's a very <laughs> impressive trophy with a <laughs> cornucopia on top. So we're very excited about that. I think, is this our last week? I think yes, I yeah, believe it's wrapping up before now. break. And yeah. last I checked, the juniors were winning. By a lot. By a lot, <laughs> which yeah. is, I'm very happy about. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, that's been our big focus for the past few weeks, and it's going really well. Yeah. Could you guys each talk a little bit about other things you do in the school, extracurriculars and clubs that you belong to as well? Um, I, well, I'm very involved in sports. I did soccer last season. I'm currently doing basketball. I'm doing lacrosse in the spring. Um, I've been involved in the, there's a new international foreign affairs type group that just started. We're just discussing social political issues currently in both our country and countries around the world. So I'm excited to see where that goes. I'm not quite as involved in sports, but I uh, play field hockey, which wrapped up about a month and a half ago, I think. Um, let's see. Oh, right now I'm very excited to be preparing uh, to host a Costa Rican exchange student for a week in January. Uh, and then I'll be going to see her in April, so that's very exciting. Um, along with that, I'm in Spanish club because, oh, you yeah, know. Too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and also, let's see. Oh, 2019 class council. And if anyone is interested in a VHS ornament, please let me know and I can get you one. <laughs> Rotary? Rotary, yes. Um, the other meeting that I attend at times is the uh, Rotary Club. I'm a student Rotarian. I do that about once a month. The people there are lovely and I enjoy it very much. Also, class council for sophomores, we're going to be doing concessions at the girls' varsity basketball games. So yeah. that's to help profit our class as well. Yeah. yeah. And we'll be doing the boys' varsity games. So, you know, if you're ever feeling like you uh, want to see a basketball, basketball game, yeah. come, come see us at the uh, concession stand. We'll be there. And it's, if you ever want to get a thoughtful opinion, either of these two people can give you one. Um, they've often told me what I should be thinking. 
<laughs> they do a great job. And so I, you know, I, I do, I do think they're both very strong student advocates, and I'm really proud that they're here. I'm really glad that they're uh, making the time <coughs> time to be here. So thank you both. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. So uh, elsewhere in the high school, I do have copies of our latest um, newsletter to pass around. And um, a couple of weeks ago, I had a very interesting meeting. Todd Bell, uh, who's a special educator here, also runs our Special Olympics basketball team. And you may remember that we are the reigning state champions for uh, unified basketball. And we're looking to repeat that title this year. Uh, but Todd invited a representative from Special Olympics to come down and talk a little bit more about uh, the unified program in general. And one of the things we're pretty excited about is we are going to add um, unified bowling this year, um, in addition to regular bowling. And we're going to uh, partner Special Olympics students with partners from, from BUHS, and they'll, they'll bowl. I'm not quite sure how that works on a team of four. I think it's an average score, but I'm not sure. Um, the other thing that we're looking into for next year is we're, we're looking into a, uh, a new PE course called Unified PE, where um, we would partner BUHS students who are not Special Olympics athletes uh, with our Special Olympics athletes, and they would actually take a PE class together. And it's something that some schools in the northern part of the state are doing. It's a pretty exciting prospect. You know, right now we run an adaptive PE for students that are in the intensive service program. And that, you know, uh, right now Kelly DeRoche is running that. She's doing a great job. Uh, but we're looking for another another niche for both participants and also partners. Um, you know, we have a lot of students who don't necessarily want to come in and um, be varsity athletes, but they do want to have an awareness of their own fitness. But more importantly, they want to do that where they can also help other people. And, and that's where the partner players come in. And uh, if you've never gone to a unified game or any, any unified sport, I encourage you to make the time. Um, you will be rewarded uh, greatly by just watching the uh, partnerships and watching them play together, watching them cheer each other on. And uh, we're hoping to have that happen in our PE classes. So we're kind of excited to have that, that course next year. Um, we're also, hard to believe, right after break, gearing up to welcome our next uh, class of freshmen. It's hard to believe. And right now, counselors are going out and visiting schools. Um, they visit some of the outlying schools and will continue to do that. Uh, later in the spring, uh, Ms. Kaufman will actually go out. She's going to be the ninth grade administrator next year. She'll actually go out and she'll visit with every single eighth grader in the district, kind of let them see what she looks like, ask their questions. Um, then we'll have visits from eighth graders and we'll also welcome parents here in late January for a, an orientation night. Part of that orientation this year will also include an orientation to proficiency based learning. Um, as Keith mentioned, we have a half day this Thursday, and we're going to do the, for the fourth time, our now annual read aloud. Um, what we do on that half day before Christmas break is we have uh, all of our students go back to advisory. And this sounds kind of campy, but it's actually kind of a, a warm and fuzzy idea. We actually read children's books. And uh, we let the uh, teachers read, we let the students read, and uh, we just take some time. We provide the milk and the cookies. And uh, it's a nice way to kind of send things off for the holiday. The first year, there's a lot of apprehension. Would, they really, would, would people really want to do this? Um, but a, a number of students came to me this year and said, are we doing that thing the day before Christmas? Because nobody's talked about it yet. <laughs> so we're doing that Thursday. So uh, if you want to join us for some cookies and reading, um, I'll be reading in my advisory. Um, I think we're going to do runaway dinner, which is a classic, which you may not know. And a, a few other ones, um, but we enjoy that a great deal. Um, over break, Robert Clark and his crew are going to be busy. Um, they have two big projects uh, that involve painting, and they'll be painting the BUHS multipurpose room, which is overdue for some work, and also the BAMS gym. So those places will be temporarily uh, not available for use, but um, you know he's got the, the painters ready to go, and they're going to come in and, and spruce up the place a little bit. And last but not least, when we come back from break, uh, we shift our focus to final exams. And final exams this year, this year are the 18th and 19th, barring any snow day. Lyle tells me we're not going to have any. Um, so, thank you. So, thank you. All right, so central office. Uh, you're going to do this? Yes. Okay. 
So I have just one, and it may be something you want to put on a later agenda, but the VSBA has sent out something for you to consider, and that's having all of you have WSESU.org uh, email accounts. Um, the point of that is that if for some reason you were ever subpoenaed for something on the board and you had to submit your emails, if it's in your personal account that you now have, then all of those have to go as well by putting it into a WSESU.org. That would be your official school board account. Um, and you would take your take it out of your personal account. So it's something you can consider, and we can come back to it. Um, if you decide to, Gary Parzik would be the person who would set it up and let you know what your uh, name is and your password. And, uh, so think about that over break and come back to it. Thanks. So under my report, I have two things. One is I've been, I've been running by Barb that it's the time of year where the letter that goes in the front of the big book for the our big annual meeting has to get written for the last number of years. I have written that on behalf of all of us collectively. Um, if somebody has this burning desire to, to write that, I'm happy to relinquish it. If nobody does, I'm happy to do it if everybody's okay with that <laughs> ahead of time. So if somebody really wants to do it, please let me know. Um, we can take care of that. I don't see anybody jumping, so I'm assuming we have right. a burning desire to have you do it. Have that <laughs> work. All right, that, that, <laughs> that's, what, that's the way it is. That's good. I'm, I'm okay with that. Just don't look at me. Okay. The last thing, the other thing I have is, and it's coming around right now for everyone to take one from the board, is our attendance for the past year for the annual report, um, for the annual meeting. And um, so, the extra things that people have done, i.e. Act 46 and some of those things aren't in there. Um, there was one for, I was, I'll just point it out for Sean, that where we know that he was at a Guilford meeting representing us, so he missed a meeting here, but it's denoted in such a way that he was at a, a school board related thing. Um, so, if everyone can take a look at this, um, and before you go tonight, let me know one way or the other if it seems right or if there's a mistake somewhere along the way, um, just so that I can report that back so that it can get printed appropriately. That would be great. So that's it for my report. Um, moving to unfinished business. Um, the first thing under our unfinished business is the budget. With it, it said action needed, but we've had to table that to our next meeting based on the budget conversation that happened earlier um, because of some late breaking news and information that the Finance Committee has to deal with. So we'll continue to table that. Um, the next thing under unfinished business is Act 46 discussion. And I didn't know, sorry, Lyle, I didn't know if you had maybe any information to share or if anybody had any information to share around the groups that are working on an Act 46 plan? This week, I would assume that every board will be voting on what they want to send to the state. Okay. It's the 25th, it has to be there, so. Yeah. So there's nothing new that we are aware of for that. And I know that you've been a part of the Putney discussion, yes? Yes. Has, is there anything new that we should, that we should know about? No. The, we're finishing up our self-assessment. We expect to vote tomorrow. Oh, excellent. And I know that Guilford was having a conversation this evening as part of their meeting, so. All right. Um, is there anything else under unfinished business for tonight? See, so I think so. Under new business, um, we just have to set a date for, the, for our January meeting. January is an interesting month for us this year because the, both the first and the third Mondays of January are holidays. Um, typically, are those are not days that we normally would meet. Um, so, and there is work that we have to do in relation to the annual meeting for February. Um, so I've been advised that really the latest that we could do it, a, a meeting in January to get that stuff done in time would be January 8th, which is the second Monday of the month. Sounds good to me. Anybody have a major issue with January 8th as our <coughs> January board meeting? <coughs> Just one meeting in January? Well, that was the next part of the conversation related to that is because 
if you look at our uh, this this little handy dandy little grid was very helpful because that we did only do one meeting in January last year. We typically uh, only do one. In January. We typically only do one because usually Martin Luther King Day falls on the third Monday of the yes. month. Yes. Um, so that so we have only done one historically, um, and barring any other major <coughs> concerns, I would say we could just plan on doing the eighth as our meeting and then. If need be, we could do one later in January if the administration needs something from us. And they, we could kind of play that by year as we get closer to it. That because works. we will only have one regular meeting in February as well. We have the annual meeting. Right. Because we'll have, a, we'll have a regular meeting. And I would assume we will have our regular meeting on February 5th. And then we'll have the annual meeting the following week. So we'll have, technically, we'll be together twice in February. <coughs> Does that work for everybody on the board? And yes, we have a finance meeting on the 4th, and we should have everything wrapped up for the 8th. For the 8th, right. Yeah. And earlier, I, w I, I did speak with Frank earlier, and the 8th is really kind of our deadline to get things done so that it can get forward in time for the an our annual meeting. So does that work for everybody? Okay. Excellent. So we'll do January 8th, and then we'll do the 5th in February, and available if need be for a another meeting later in January if administration needs something from us. Is there anything else under new business then? Mr. Chairman. Yes. There appearing to be no other business. I move we adjourn. Happy New Year and Merry Christmas to all. All in favor? Second that. Yeah. All in favor. Thank you. All right. Excellent. Yes. Have a good holiday everyone. Thank you.